Yo, I'm on my way to go see Walter, Diamond, and Charlie. The dogs at my, well, what would have been my mother-in-law, but I call her mom anyways. Uh, I'm going to see her and I'm going to take care of the dogs. That's why I'm out and about, and I figured I'd make a quick video. I'm going to give my thoughts on uh, the co-main event, the main event, and the fights at UFC tonight, and uh, give my thoughts on a series that I used to like very much and has gone to complete shit. So uh, for UFC, you got Henry Cejudo versus Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson the second, uh, Mighty Mouse being the champion at uh, 125 pound flyweight. Their first fight, uh, well, Mighty Mouse of course dominated the fight and won, as he often does. Uh, he really needs a good uh, heel or a good uh, someone to push him, someone to really challenge him. Like, you know, how Ali had Joe Frazier, and, you know, different, like, like, they need a good rival. He needs a really good rival to really make him, you know, more popular and stand out. But anyways, uh, I expect Demetrius to, of course, uh, dominate again. I expect him to do it in more devastating fashion. Demetrius Johnson is arguably the greatest all time. Uh, I would say that is George St. Pierre. Without a shadow of a doubt, with I'd say Mighty Mouse being a very close second or possible third. But he's definitely within the top three of greatest of all time in terms of skill and pound for pound. Because the guy's just friggin' amazing, man. And I do not see him losing to Henry Cejudo. Uh, Cejudo's best chance is with wrestling if he can manage to take him down. But I just see DJ uh, slaughtering him. But, uh... Why, why I see, say, sorry, why I say uh, GSP is the best of all time, bar none, is because he has fought the best of the best of the best in a few different generations of fighters. He's fought multiple generations of fighters, and he's beat them all, you know, okay, he has a couple losses, those were early on in his career, Matt Sarah and Matt Hughes, and then, uh, oh, but he lost to stupid uh, Johnny Hendricks. Well, that's debatable. He definitely did outpoint him. GSP was beat up pretty bad in that fight. He looked bad, but then again, you know, fucking Mr. 70% Johnny Hendricks, which he bragged he was going to knock out GSP for sure. He had no chance. He was on a ton of steroids, as you knew. You knew he was on steroids, and USADA is proof of that. After, after the fallout from USADA, look what happened to shitty Johnny Hendricks, man. If Johnny Hendricks hadn't been on the juice and fought GSP, GSP would have knocked him the fuck out. But anyways, uh, you know, GSP is, he is the man. He is a true sportsman. He is a true martial artist. He is the champion that the UFC needs and that it doesn't deserve. But uh, enough about pound for pound, greatest of all time. Uh, Demetrius Johnson is one of the best fighters ever can't dispute that and if you do you're not a real mixed martial arts fan probably a Connor McNiggett fan or some other freaking bullshit like that trash talkers WWE kind of shit but uh and then you got uh, main event which will be Cody No Love Gar Garbrandt versus TJ Dillashaw the sequel Dillashaw being the champion who beat Cody Garbrandt who did his first title defense and lost it to him and uh, these two do not like each other. The hate is real. The beef is real. It is fake or manufactured. They really do not like each other. I don't want to go into the whole Team Alpha Male, TJ Levin sort of stuff. You have to look that up on your own. But suffice it to say, these, these two really do not like each other. And the beef is real. And that's a big reason why people are really excited to see this fight. Because unlike other... Like, these two are top-notch fighters. They're great to watch. They throw down. They don't just out-wrestle, wrestle fuck you to death. They're really fun to watch. And they really don't like each other. And you can feel the energy and the emotion. I can really feel it. And I can't say exactly what's going to happen here. Uh, Cody Garbrandt has probably trained his ass off. And he's probably worked really hard. He's not coming in as a trash-talking bastard. He knew he got his ass kicked the first time. He's being more humble. And you know what? He seems to be more calm, less emotional, and he seems to be more focused. Uh, TJ Dillashaw, 
is being more cocky. Granted, he's got a bit of a reason to be. That's understandable, right? But he's more cocky. He's so oh, I'm going to win for sure. He's very, very confident, and he very well could win for sure. And personally, I do expect him to win, but I see, I can totally see Garbrandt pulling an upset and beating him and having a trilogy fight between these guys. And I'd, I'd still like to see that. Either way, this is going to be a great fight. I say TJ is going to knock him out again. I could be wrong. But uh, this, these are some fights that you don't want to miss. These two, the main event and the co-main event, are going to be a lot of fun to watch. And I'm looking forward to it. So those other fights in the card, I'm not going to go over them. Uh, okay, so now, TV series. Oh, sorry. Walking Dead. Walking Dead fucking sucks. I know. This is coming from a guy who has Walking Dead t-shirts. Used to watch the show all the time. But uh, if you aren't up and up on what's happening, Scott Gimple was the, the, the deciding factor of getting rid of Carl. Which made no fucking sense because if you've read the comic books, Carl had a huge, huge, huge portion and he's still alive and he's supposed to do a lot of badass shit. Now we're going to get to see that. You can thank Scott Gimple for that. And it was that very decision of killing off Carl which is causing Andrew Lincoln to want to leave the show. And he is leaving the show for sure. They're killing off Rick Grimes. And shortly after that, Michonne's actress also is thinking of leaving the show and she's probably going to be gone so you got carl's gone you got uh gwen already died you know that rick is gone all the hope heart and soul of the walking dead is finished it's, it's gone there's no more heart and soul left in the walking dead there's no hope there's no nothing and i uh i'm gonna end up watching it me and my girlfriend are going to watch it. We've watched it all the way up to this point. And it's just like a tradition sort of thing. But am I excited for it? Am I into it anymore? Am I really, you know, can't wait to see what happens? No, I don't really give a shit anymore. Walking Dead is dead. Scott Gimple killed that series. Oh, but he, he takes risks and well, your fucking risk didn't pay off and it freaking killed the series. You know what Scott Gimple is? Scott Gimple is the 343 of The Walking Dead. The 343 of the movie and television industry. You know? Hey, let's let's kill off the hope of the show. Let's kill off the guy that's supposed to secede Rick and that everyone wants to, like, maybe see live out at the end of the series and maybe have Rick turn at the end and have Carl. Like, like well, let's kill off the very hope for the show. Right? Just like Thief from Music. Ah, oh, you know? But fuck... Fuck classic Halo, fuck its roots, fuck where Halo came from. Let's just make something completely different and turn the series into something like this. That's a great idea, isn't it? Let's ruin the series. That'll help bring in the numbers. <laughs> well, we know what happened to Halo. And we definitely know what's happening to The Walking Dead. But anyways, so... The Walking Dead has turned to complete shit. Daryl is now the main front man, running man of the, the Walking Dead. Do I hate Daryl? No. I like him. He's a cool character. I don't hate him. I know he was created just for the TV series. I've always had hopes for him. I've always wanted him to get together with uh, Carol, like a Carol and Daryl sort of thing. I've always wanted that to happen. Those two were supposed to. I've always wanted to see him get together. But anyways, that's just my personal fan hopes for him. But, you know, he cannot carry the series himself. He is not that good of a talker. And this is going to be an absolute disaster. And I'm going to have a slight little smile and I'm going to enjoy watching this series burn to the ground. You know, it wouldn't surprise me to see a bunch of feminist SJW politics start to infect The Walking Dead now wouldn't surprise me in the slightest and you know what here's a bit of a conspiracy I think it might happen but anyways yeah that's my thoughts of uh, UFC on tonight and uh, the walking dead in its future and what I think of as a longtime viewer I think it's going to be shit anyways 
I want all you, all you guys to have a good day. Take care of yourself. God damn, it's fucking hot. And, uh, yeah, just take care of yourself and comment down below. What do you guys think of the fights? Are there any other fights on that fight card that you know of that you're excited for that you want to see or that you're interested? And uh, this is just an FYI, a, a public service announcement, P.S., you know, there's a lot of fighter or uh, fight fans or people that watch mixed martial arts that are only into the co-main, the main event. They only listen to established names. You know, fucking, we're not going to talk about Conor McNiggett and the WWE fucking fanboys, stuff like that. Those guys are casuals. Those guys aren't real mixed martial arts fans. But some people are like, oh, they only focus on the big names. I'm telling you right now, I've been a fight fan. I've been watching mixed martial arts for many, many years. Uh, I didn't like watch it all my life, but when I was about 23, 24, I found uh, torrent files of them online. And I basically watched every single fucking UFC from the very first one up to that point. And I basically kept up with the series ever since. And I've gone back and I've watched Pride. I've watched, you know, different fight organizations, 1FC, Bellator, uh, Pancrase. I've, I've watched a ton and I love fights. And I'm telling you right now that the undercard the prelim card, even sometimes the early fight pass prelims, stuff like that. Sometimes you'll see some awesome fucking fights, man, because they're younger, they're, they're unknown, they don't have the biggest record, and they want to make a name for themselves. They have the hunger, they have the drive, they want to be recognized, they want to be known. They are going to take the risk. They aren't just going to wrestle fuck you to death. They aren't just going to lay down and hold you down and have a boring ass match like that. These people want to get known. So, when you're watching the fights, consider staying in for the long haul. Start watching the prelim cards. You know, oftentimes I've found when you got established fighters and you got your prelim card, the prelim card sometimes outshines the main event. But anyways, that's all I got to say. So everyone, you take care. Comment down below and have a good one.